Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second episode of our Lunch and Learn series. Lunch and Learn is a series of videos that is meant to be watched when you're eating your lunch and familiarizing yourself with maybe new concepts or some useful tips that we at Hudson and Thames found out while doing our own kind of self-improvement through reading books, reading articles, and we want to share this knowledge with you. Today, I'm going to be talking about High Performance Python, an incredible book, and especially the third chapter, talking about lists and tuples. My name is Valeria Provoshina, and today I'm going to be a lecturer. I'm a quantitative researcher at Hudson and Thames, as well as master's in quantitative finance in the University of Warsaw. If you have any questions regarding this lecture or on the other topics, feel, please feel free to reach out to me through my social media handles that are listed down below. Cool. So what are we going to talk about? We'll start with kind of introduction and sequence on what is the key to writing uh, efficient programs and dive a little bit deeper into the two foundational data structures, lists and tuples, and what are the differences between them. After that, we'll proceed on to more concrete learning outcomes of this chapter, starting with the tips for a more efficient search in the race, moving on to lists as dynamic arrays and tuples as static arrays. And everything is nicely concluded with a short reference section. So without further ado, let's start. The key to writing efficient programs. You can't build a house without understanding what a brick is. So creating a high performance code is impossible without the understanding of the true nature of data structures. As data structures are the true building blocks of our code, and today, Coincidentally, we're going to be talking about the two foundational data structures every Python programmer have used, however, not necessarily understand it, the whole, like, a lot of intricacies connected with these two data structures. We're going to be talking about lists and tuples. So lists and tuples, what is the big difference? Both lists and tuples are arrays, essentially, meaning that they are just a flat list of data with some intrinsic ordering. However, the lists are the dynamic type of the arrays as they support mutability and allow for resizing. However, tuples are static arrays. They are immutable and the data within them cannot be changed once they have been created. This is very important to remember and also one other thing that is associated with tuples is that tuples are cached by Python runtime, which means that we don't need to talk to the kernel to reserve memory every time we want to use one. So lists are dynamic, tuples are static, and let's go over it once more and understand in which cases we're better, way better uh, using a list and in which cases it's better to use a tuple. So lists. Lists are suited for storing data that is likely to be updated. For example, names of programming languages, person's age, weight, and height. The results of continuous series of full games, something like that, right? Something that is very likely to be updated or besides or added more data to. And tuples, on the other hand, is suited for describing properties of an unchanging thing. For example, first 20 prime numbers, first and birthday and birthplace or the result of a particular game of pool. So tuples are perfect for something that you would, for example, compare your data to your benchmarks if they're static, right? It's much con more convenient and suitable to use a tuple for something unchanging. Right. So as we discussed, the main differences between lists and tuples, it's uh, a good start for us to talk about the learning outcomes of the chapter three of the high performance Python book. So the first learning outcome is more general and is applied both to lists and tuples as it talks about the efficient search in arrays. The two ingredients necessary are the sorting algorithm and the searching algorithm. As most of the searching algorithms already assume that our data is sorted. So what the authors of the book suggest is that python.sort function uses actually a very efficient sorting algorithm called, uh, called TimSort, which is actually a hybrid algorithm that combines the merge sort and insert sort and achieves the complexity of ON. Pretty cool, in my opinion, in the best case, average, of course, 
And all again, in the worst case, basically comparing it to any other sorting algorithm in, at its worst point. So once again, the authors of the book recommend using even the default sorting algorithm available in Python for you to sort your data if you need to search it for. So that's the first part of the equation. And the second part, of course, the search algorithm itself. The default way for the Python to search for items is by dot index function. Basically, you give it the variable uh, value of which you want to find in your array, list or tuple, and it will go one by one doing a linear, performing a linear search until it finds the, uh, the index and the value that you want it to. However, there is a much more efficient solution to this problem. It is binary search. Binary search has a, an average complexity of O log n, and instead of looking at the items of the list one by one, it starts right from the middle and halves the list over and over and over and over again until the correct value is found, making it much faster than aforementioned linear search. And you can see the brief description of the algorithm on the right hand side in the picture. As uh, you can see that we have our target seven and first we compare it with the middle value, right? And as seven is smaller than our middle value, we after that we all only be looking at the uh, smaller, uh, like how to go, lower part of the uh, of the list between two and eight. And then after that we'll still again find the middle point five and do it over and over again until we find our index value uh, three for our target. Uh, the inbuilt Python bisect module simplifies much of this process by giving easy methods to add elements in a list while maintaining its sorting, for example, in sort method. Now it's the natural time for us to proceed into talking about lists. So we've already mentioned that lists are dynamic arrays and they support resizing operations that can increase the capacity of an array that already had the uh, set amount of memory allocated. And it's natural for lists to make the mutability its key feature. In, in, our be in the best interests of, of Python developers was to create a way that is the, for lists, to create the way for lists to be as fast as possible at its key goal, being mutable. So here we get the append procedure. The append procedure has the complexity of O1. This is incredible. The speed of append procedure is always O1 in the best case and in the worst case. However, it comes at a cost and the cost unfortunately is in memory usage. So let's see how the append procedure work, uh, works out. On the right hand side, you can definitely you can see the visualization of the procedure. And right now I'll describe it to you and you can follow kind of line by line. When a list of n is first appended to, a new list that is big enough to hold n plus one elements is created by Python. It's important to note that the size of the new list created is not necessarily n plus one, it's rather uh, it sizes m while m is greater than n. And the m value is calculated in the list allocation equation that you can see a bit lower in the slide uh, to provide for future events. So it's usually allocating a bit more space than n plus one, depending on the size of our original list. After that, the data is copied and the old list is destroyed. And you could, you could have guessed it yourself that even though the amount, uh, the amount of memory headroom is small, which each time you append, it can add up really, really quickly. For example, we have a list of 100 million elements and the, this list of 100 million elements after a lot of appending will have 12 million 500,007 more elements in memory allocated than actually elements in the list. Pretty crazy, right? To 
further demonstrate my point, I'd like you to see this graph that basically shows the over allocation in lists depending on the size of the list. And you can see the number over of elements over allocated is definitely skyrocketing the bigger the size of the list is. However, so you need to be uh, very cautious about the memory over allocation. However, it definitely kind of, this is our minus to our plus to make everything harmonious. The plus is that appending is fast, mutability is super fast, and the minus and the drawback is that the memory over allocation is a bit bigger than we would ever wish for. So mutability, we talk about that. Now it's time to talk about tuples and the static arrays. Being static allows tuples to not worry about the efficiency of mutability, resizing, none of the thing, and kind of conserve it, its resources that it needs for it to exist, uh, and kind of opposing to the all of the overhead cost that needed for the list. So the first point for the tuples is that there is no in-place resizing. Uh, what I mean by that is to actually resize a tuple, the only way you can actually do this is by concatenating the two already creating tuples. And what it does, it does not kind of makes the initial tuple bigger, or rather it creates a new entity, a new tuple that is the size of the two uh, tuples concatenated. So no in-place resizes in there, and no need to account for that. It means that no extra resources are allocated for that. So compared to lists, even if you create a list without using the append function and adding this uh, headroom and more space, it still takes up more memory than a tuple of the same, si same size because the list still needs to keep some information needed to efficiently resize in the future. The second benefit of using a tuple is resource caching. Python is a garbage collected language, meaning that any uh, memory for a value uh, for a variable that is not used is going right back to the OS and repurposed to for another app or another function, right? However, for tuples, the situation is a bit different. It is safe for a future use, meaning that if you would like to create a tuple again, it will not have to communicate with OS and rather create it right away, taking from our reserve, right? So you can see on the right hand, uh, hand side that the creation of a list and a tuple of the same size, it's really, really different in terms of speed, as creation of a tuple is almost six times faster than creating a list, right? So what we've concluded by now, that lists are good at being mutable, and they are fast uh, at resizing and adding new elements. However, they have overhead costs, right, in terms of memory. Tuples, right? Uh, tuples can be created fastly, can uh, take up less memory, but they cannot be changed and they cannot be uh, resized in place. So choose wisely which one is more suitable for you to use in your code. As it, as it uh, was obvious, the reference section for this short lecture is quite short as we only refer to the high performance Python book, Practical Performance Programming for Humans. I highly recommend you to check this out for yourself and it has tons and tons and tons of more, uh, more useful information. Or you can wait for us to create a new video and maybe even more on this topic as the next one should be the one on uh, dictionaries and sets. And I highly recommend you to check that out in the future. So if anyone has any questions, my social media handles are listed down below and I'll be glad to answer them. You can also always write your questions in our YouTube comment section. Please press like for us to understand that you like this video, subscribe for more information and thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.